The last couple of days, I've been practicing with my students with fluency. And as you know, fluency is very important. It's the bridge to comprehension. And a lot of times, the students are struggling with comprehension because they're struggling with fluency, and they're spending way too much time decoding the information and losing all of comprehension. Um, today, we're going to do some choral reading. Choral reading is just that. You're going to read in unison. Um, I'm going to set the pattern. I'm going to model it for them. I'll read a couple of phrases. I'll have them give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whether or not they feel I'm reading with fluency in a choral reading. Uh, you could do choral reading several different ways. You could do it as a unison. You could also assign each student a line or even a stanza. But the biggest thing with choral reading is you want to utilize some type of text that's going to be high interest, motivator, and also with choral reading, something that's syntactic that can show them the importance of punctuation with that. So the last three days, we have been practicing and focusing on fluency. What is fluency to you, Freddie? A better understanding of what you read. A better understanding of what you read. What else? Tell me something else you understand about fluency. You bring to life to the words that you're reading. Very good. Bring to life the words that you are reading. It's just like how many of y'all have a CD in a computer? How many of y'all put the CD in the computer? And when you put it in, you'll have a little screen that pops up that shows the fluctuations. That's fluency. Fluency is a bridge to comprehension. You don't want to read something that's like this or listen to a song that goes... You want to see the fluency. You want to see the rhythm, the stress, and the tone. Most of y'all have become frustrated with reading because of your fluency. If you're sitting there and you're focusing so much time on decoding and trying to understand word by word, you're missing the whole point. Anything else? You want to add something to fluency? Gives life. Gives life to the characters, to the text. So take a look right now on your desk. You have what's called Still I Rise. Still I Rise is written by an author. Her name is Maya Angelou. Anybody ever heard of Maya Angelou? What do you know about her? She's a poet. She's a poet. What else? She's African American. Does anybody know the time period in which she wrote? Civil rights. Civil rights. This is called Still I Rise. Based on that information, let's make a prediction. What do you think Still I Rise is going to be about? What do you think? We have an African American poet, Still I Rise, and it's written in Civil Rights. What do you think? Now she's talking about how they're still coming up and how they keep them down. How people keep them on down and they're still rising up. Now, I'm going to read to you the first stanza. Remember, your stanza is your block of lines. Always pay attention to your punctuation. I'm going to read it first to you. You're going to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you think I'm reading it fluently, with fluency, with tone, with personality, with paying attention to the punctuation and the stress. Still our rise, okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up for good, thumbs down for bad. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may try me in the very dirt, but still like this, I'll rise. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs down. The whole meaning, everything was lost. Again, it was mm, the whole humdrum. Now, let me try it again. Paying attention to the areas that we talked about, the stress, the personality, the tone, the punctuation, and the phrasing. And then give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <clears throat> you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Thumbs up. Did I pay attention to the uh, fluctuations? Again, we're on the wave. Okay, now, choral reading. We've done it before, but let's review what choral reading is. Choral reading is reading in unison. I'm going to choral read this, and you're going to join in just as soon as you feel comfortable. And as we go along, we want to work on the personality. Remember, let's try to connect with the author and the time period and what she's talking about here. When you walk away from this poem, if you have the correct fluency, you're going to really feel for the author. You're going to really feel with the author. You're going to understand her rage, her oppression, and how she, no matter what, she's still going to rise. Okay. Based on that, though, if we look at this, we have the stanzas. We need to pay attention to the, the punctuation. You see in the second stanza, there are questions, two questions, and it's through that, that's kind of a pattern that will happen through the poem. Well, what is a question? How should your voice sound when you ask a question? You just start right down and go up. 
your voice is going to sound a little different. Be like, Miss Jones, I was not skipping your class. It's more like, Miss Jones, I was not skipping your class. Okay, it's having that personality with it. Same with her. You think you're going to keep me oppressed? I don't think so. Okay, so you need to, to kind of be part of this personality in this and reading that in your head. Because like I said, fluency is the biggest struggle that you're going to have. When you are simply reading word by word by word, you're missing out on comprehending the actual passage. Okay? So, based on that, let's go ahead and look at Still I Rise. All right. Still I Rise. Again, I'm going to start off. I want you to feel comfortable. Listen for my signals, for the punctuation, and the pauses. If we need to go back for a couple of lines, we can. Okay? I'm going to start off. Are you ready? And you're going to join in with me. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may drop me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells walking in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, when the surf be a tide, just like cold screaming high. Still, I'll rise. If you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weeping by my soul for pride. That's my haughtiness offend you? That, 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 stop right there. Okay. Let's go. Does my haughtiness offend you? Because remember, going back over here, we want to have stress to that word, my haughtiness. Does it offend you? So let's go back to that phrase, that line right there. Okay, you ready? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it off for heart? Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, my air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? That I dance like I've got time in the rest of all my eyes. Slow it down. Out of the hearts of history's shame, I rise up from a past that's rooted in vain. I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a day where the morning is clear, I rise. Bringing the gift that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. All right, good job, very good. All right, based off of that, I hope you see the understanding. I hope you're able to walk away with her feeling and how she felt at that time when she wrote this poem. I will still arise regardless of the situation and the time period. As you can see when we wrap up core reading, core reading can be used for all levels. Predominantly, this class is about 98% level one and two. I chose certain um, texts and literature that's high interest for them that can really show them the importance of fluency between the punctuation, the stress. The biggest opportunity for core reading, the biggest opportunity lies there for the level one and level two readers is to be able to repeat and repeat and repeat a certain reading until they have more ownership and a better understanding of what is incorporated into fluency.